transitions help the reader recognize the coherence that's already there in the paragraph. If you outlined very carefully, if you decided exactly how to arrange your details, maybe using one of the traditional patterns, there's a clear progression from one detail to the next that makes sense. You still need to sprinkle in some transitions to guide the reader as you're moving from one to the next so they're able to follow that. If I can give you an analogy, the streets of downtown Birmingham are coherently arranged. It's not just absolutely random. Civil engineers have sat down and decided how the grid will be put together, right? But if there were no street signs, it would still be very easy to get lost, right? There's so much detail. There's so many streets and avenues and things like that and so many buildings that it would be very easy to kind of get yourself lost. Where am I in the grid, right? And so you need those street signs to kind of keep yourself oriented amidst all that detail. That's really what transitions are doing. They're connecting one supporting detail to the next. This example paragraph is going to sound a little bit strange because it has no transitions in it. As we move from one supporting detail to the next, it's not clear, why are you telling me that new detail? What in the world does that have to do with what you were just saying? It will sound odd in places. It will even sound a little bit immature in places because sometimes children don't use a lot of transitions, right? Then we'll look at the same paragraph with transitions added so I can really show you, you know, what transitions really do. They do more than just number the supporting details. They actually logically connect them. That's what we're trying to see here, how transitions logically connect one supporting detail to the next. Topic sentence first, Bessie Delaney was one remarkable woman. You told me that, now show me what was so remarkable about her. In 1918, she was turned down by NYU's dentistry program. She was a woman. She enrolled at Columbia University in 1919 to pursue her dream of becoming a dentist. She encountered prejudice in that program. She was a woman. She was an African American. Bessie reached her goal of becoming a dentist. She was brave. She was determined. Bessie studied hard. She didn't give up. She graduated from Columbia University in June of 1923. She practiced dentistry for many years. She died in 1995 at the age of 104. This is a coherent paragraph. The supporting details are arranged carefully. And I think you can see if you give it a quick second look that these were arranged in time order. We start way back in 1918 when she's just trying to get into, into dentistry school, gradually follow her through her career, all the way up to 1995 when she dies at the age of 104. That's time order. But there are places, because of the lack of transitions, that it sounds odd. For example, the first supporting detail is clear enough. It's 1918, NYU turns her down. Right, she tried to get into the program and, and they they say, no, thank you. The second supporting detail is where it starts to seem a little strange. She was a woman. What in the world does her being a woman have to do with her being turned down by NYU in 1918? Now, the reader could maybe guess. They could look at the date and say, well, gosh, look how long ago that is. Women don't even have to vote yet. Um, maybe NYU doesn't want any women in its dentistry program. Maybe it's, you know, uh, some other reason, but it's, it's not the, the reader's job to guess what the second detail has to do with the first detail. It's actually the writer's job to make that connection clear. So we need a transition for that second supporting detail, she was a woman. And a simple transition like secondly, something like that, doesn't help at all, right? We need a word or a phrase that tells me what her being a woman has to do with her being turned down by NYU. A simple one that comes to mind, not the only possible one, but how about just the word because? In 1918, she was turned down by NYU's dentistry program because she was a woman. Now I know what that second detail has to do with the first one. I know how they logically connect. That, ideally, is what transitions do. They don't just number the details, firstly, secondly, thirdly, lastly, right? 
they connect them logically like that. Sometimes it's a simple word like because. We would say that that second detail is in a cause and effect relationship with the first one. Her being a woman was the cause of NYU turning her down. NYU turning her down is the effect of her being a woman. Okay. What about the third detail? She enrolled at Columbia University in 1919 to pursue her dream of becoming a dentist. It helps if you notice the date. It's a year later. It also helps if you happen to know that Columbia is another New York City university. It's just north of Harlem. So it sounds like we've got a on the one hand, on the other hand kind of situation here, right? That the third detail that she enrolled at, at Columbia in 1919 that seems to be very different, maybe even the opposite of the first two details, right? So we need some kind of transition that signals contrast. That's the word for that oppositeness, right? We need a word that signals contrast that says, hey, reader, get ready. We're taking a U-turn here. I'm about to give you a detail that's very different from the details that we were just giving you, right? So again, not the only possible word, but how about a transition word like however? that prepares the reader for that kind of U-turn, right? This third detail is related to the first two in that it's the opposite of them. NYU turned her down, Columbia accepted her. 1918 versus 1919, okay? We won't go through the entire paragraph, right? But maybe looking at one more link between details where a transition could help. How about the last detail and the next to last detail? The next to last detail, she practiced dentistry for many years. The very last detail, she died in 1995 at the age of 104. Now that's not cause and effect, is it? Practicing dentistry didn't cause her to die. So I can't use a word like because. I can't randomly choose transitions. It's gotta be one that makes sense for the content. This doesn't sound like um, contrast either. I mean, practice dentistry is not exactly the opposite of dying. Right, um, So it's not one of those kind of tr relationships. If you think for a minute, it's just a simple time relationship. We just might want a simple transition that tells us that the next to last detail happened before the very last detail. Or we could say the very last detail happened later than the next to last detail. So maybe even just a simple time word like after. How about after practicing dentistry for many years, comma, she died in 1995, right? I combine those two last two supporting details into the same sentence, who cares? There's still two supporting details. They just happen to be in the same sentence. But I use that time word after to link them logically. Again, these example transitions I gave you are not the only possible ones that would work, but they're just workable examples. Here's the same paragraph revised to add those needed transitions in there. And we've seen several of these already. Some of these, like because, show cause and effect. Another one is as a result, towards the bottom. That shows a cause and effect relationship between supporting details. Some of them show contrast, like however, or nevertheless. Right? Some of them show time, like after. Right? Some of them just show addition, like a simple word like and. Okay. We'll look at lots of examples of transition words and phrases, but this is a very important point. This is one thing that will upgrade your transitions from a lower level up to the college level, is they're not simply just words like first, then, next, thirdly, finally, right? They're words that really connect ideas logically and show these relationships from one detail to the next. So some transitions show illustration. For example, when you're moving from a telling statement into a showing statement, you might use transitions like, for example, for instance, namely, if you need to signal contrast, you need to say, hey, reader, here comes some details that are the opposite of the ones I was just giving you. We're taking a U-turn here. You could use words like on the contrary or nevertheless or on the other hand or rather. If you just need to let the reader know that you're working your way down a list and you're moving on to the next item, you might use words like furthermore or moreover. 
if you're using a time arrangement, you need to keep that timeline clear in the reader's mind. So you're using time words like after, before, next, last, in the meanwhile, you know, in the meantime, things like that. If you have things arranged according to space, you need to guide the readers along this careful progression so their eyes sweep along the scene or the room that you're describing. So you use words like behind, beside, um, in the foreground, you know, uh, beneath, under, um, in the center, things like that. We'll come back to concession later, what that means when we're talking about building arguments. So we'll save those kind of transitions for a little later in the course. If you want to say, hey, reader, here some, come some details that are very similar to the ones I just gave you. It's kind of the opposite of contrast. You can use words that show similarity or comparison. If you want to emphasize certain details, you want to say, hey, reader, here come some details that are especially important. I want you to really wake up and notice these. You might use words like indeed or surely, right, or really, you know, to show emphasis. You see more transitions that show details are coming up, that show examples are coming up, that show cause and effect. As you're getting towards the end of a paragraph and you're going to make your point, you might use words that show summary or prepare the reader to hear a suggestion or a recommendation that you're making. We use transitions a lot. That's why I'm showing you lots and lots of examples. Your typical 093 student comes into the course not using enough transitions. So maybe for the first writing assignment, maybe use a few more transitions than your instincts would have told you to. Right? It's possible to have too many, right? but that's not your typical 093 student's problem. But we can help you find a, you know, a happy medium but most 093 students don't have quite enough yet. There is not a strict rule that says you have to have a transition every single time you move from one supporting detail to the next, but let's say most of the time you do. I would say maybe about 80% of the time as you move from one supporting detail to the next, you have some kind of transition. That 20% of the time when you don't, it's because the relationship between the two is so incredibly obvious that you could get by without having a transition to signal that relationship. So we've said that good paragraphs are unified. That means they have a topic sentence that states the main idea clearly and formally, right? And none of the supporting details stray away from that main idea, even in a subtle way. We said a good paragraph is coherent. That means its supporting details were arranged in a deliberate, careful, orderly way when the writer was outlining the paragraph to begin with. And then once the paragraph is drafted, you include lots of good internal transitions to signal the relationship of one supporting detail to the next. So the reader can go, follow along with your thought process in a very easy, natural way. So remember that what creates an effective paragraph at the college level is that it's as perfectly unified as possible and it's as perfectly coherent as possible. When you're outlining and drafting, do your best to create unity and coherence. But you always, always, when you revise, go back and improve on that unity and especially improve on that coherence, right? You can always take it up to the next level, especially with coherence.